Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it was never an intention to have this course or to contribute to what I felt, Mr. Speaker, would have been a motion passed flawlessly and with the concurrence of all members. But you see, Mr. Speaker, sometimes persons have to show their true colors. And in that regard, I refer to no other than the member for Mikud South. Mr. Speaker, he went down memory lane and I might just go there a bit. He has distinguished himself, Mr. Speaker, in the last four prime ministers uh, this country was fortunate to have. Three of them supported St. Jude. Three of them supported St. Jude. One called it the old St. Jude. And having spent about seven million dollars on two buildings, he demolished them. And today he speaks of accountability. Today. Mr. Speaker, he spoke of health services. Let me touch on that quickly. And he referred to a letter which I had described in a different forum and for which they felt they should lambest me. But as I always say, Mr. Speaker, once you jump in the political arena, your back must be broadened and you must be prepared to take the blows. But refutal is mandatory. Mr. Speaker, as far as health is concerned, the member for Miku South told two categorical lies, or untruths, if you want to call lie unparliamentary. Both the Leclerc and Entripo Health Centers are operational. Both of them are operational. He indicated earlier that none of the health centers in the Castries basins are working. So that is lie number one. Mama, I said, listen. Um, Mampu Miku South Diko Sataleala. Pani, your health center, Castri Kika Kika Tuavai. Mwevle di Sapavwe. Ek, um, health center, Masi Kako Ponsana di Acholma. Health center, La Clary, Ek, health center, Entripo Katuavai. That is the first one. Mr. Speaker, he spoke about health care being the worst. And this, hey, his substantiation, a letter written by an author who invariably, who invariably, you see sometimes, Mr. Speaker, what they do, they take the cap of a supporter, place it on the heart, on the heads with professionalism, and then say they speak as a professional. So they are supporters of the party, but working, operating as professionals. Mr. Speaker, let me say this. Oh, yes, he did. And he op I'm entering, I'm entering. Let me say this. And the records are clear, Mr. Speaker, because I remembered it. I went to do my research. Under Philip Joseph Pierre, the Ministry of Health has received the greatest allocation ever in the history of the Member, please refer to the member by his portfolio. His, um, sorry, sorry. My bad, Mr. Speaker. Under the leadership of Abba leadership, Premier Minister Mampu Castries is Minister Te Apeisala. How we souvre plus la han passe yo jamais juin depuis nous ni au gouvernement à cette liste. And that is a fact. The records are there, and I can substantiate it. I will on Thursday. The greatest allocations are under the leadership of this current Prime Minister. So, Mr. Speaker, and he went on to say the letter says, the letter says. But when you juxtapose the contents of the letter and the apparent castigation of the government by the author, one needs to ask, is it that same person, was it that very author who once said, Mr. Speaker, when someone died on the floor of a hospital, he would have died anyway? Was it that same person? I don't know who it is, but I'm asking. And was it this member for Miku South who had gone to England and indicated to the people of England that he's trying his best for healthcare, but the person died? I don't know if it's good, I don't know if it's bad, but the person died. 
And then he was uh, he asked them, Am I being arrogant? And they responded unequivocally, Yes, you are being arrogant. The records are there. Today, today, you are coming and talk about healthcare. Greatest allocation. Recently, Mr. Speaker, OKEU was given by the government of this country using the very CIP funds, $11 million, Mr. Speaker. And on top of that, pharmaceuticals were paid. Pharmaceuticals were paid to the tune of $4 million receivables that preceded our time. The total receivables we met there was $17 million. And slowly but surely, payable, sorry, payable, sorry, total payables, that's quite apart from the allocation, the mainstream allocation. The Prime Minister gave them $11 million and created a significant indentation in the payables of four out of $17 million. All of this was inherited from the last administration. You see, Mr. Speaker, we were moving from, Oak, from Victoria to OKU, and we had St. Lucians who were going to cause us to move for next to nothing. But we imported a group of people called the Cayman Group, and we were paying them, Mr. Speaker, in excess of a million dollars a month. They enjoyed a two-year contract for a sum of $25 million. That 20, and we, as a government, when we came in, we had to come to this honorable house to borrow money to pay debts incurred by the last administration because of the egregious deeds. And you have the audacity, the goal, the gunner to open your mouth and talk about health care, man. Huh? Talk about health care. You know, if some autism was a, a, a disease that could have been visible, Mr. Speaker, it would have been visible as it relates to the leader of the opposition. Mr. Speaker, man talks about no ideas. We're wasting money. There is no accountability. I cannot believe it is this leader of the opposition. We had a mall, Mr. Speaker, valued at $60 million. And I, know I need not make it a document of the House. I've done so several times. It was valued at $60 million. You sold it for 13 and a half million. And apart from... Member from Eco South. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, you know, we've been down this road before. The member is misleading the House, Mr. Speaker. <sighs> okay? The mall was valued at 60 Never million. Member, seat. Can you take your seat? We sold the ground floor for $30 million, Mr. Speaker. We still own the upstairs part, and we did it through a bolt arrangement, Mr. Speaker. So again, this is a matter of, of a court case. This is a matter of, of that's still pending in court, and a parliamentary issue in which I was asked to apologize, and the facts speak for themselves. All the facts show that the ground floor was sold for $30 million, Mr. Speaker, okay, and the upstairs part was retained. Mr. Speaker. Sorry, the downstairs was sold for $15 million, Mr. Speaker. Half of the amount, Mr. Speaker. Member Castro, Central, please proceed. Yes, I will. Because, Mr. Speaker, time and time again, I've provided this honorable house with documentary evidence of my assertions. I've shown the deed of sale. I've made it a document of this house on several occasions, and I'm sure Mr. Speaker is seized of the document. There is a deed of sale, Mr. Speaker. I'll tell you what there is next. I'll tell you what there is. Talking about we sold ground floor. I'll tell you what there is, Mr. Speaker. Having sold the property, valued at $60 million for 5 million US. Okay? Having sold it, he tied us to an agreement for 16 and a half years. He tied us to an agreement of 16 and a half years in which we paid about... Now, I say about, Mr. Speaker, because it may fluctuate. Imagine in the lease agreement, there are charges that fluctuate based on what is paid at the time, in terms of electricity and other utilities. 
But the minimum, Mr. Speaker, is a million dollars a month for 16 and a half years, coming to a total of, in the region of, if my memory serves me right, $198 million. You sold the ground floor. You sold which ground floor? One, les setlissiens. Après, il prend mon la qui te vale 60 millions de dollars. Il vend pour 13 millions. Je vais vous proposer de vous dire là. Il vend pour 13 millions, 47 millions moins. 47 millions de dollars short. Il parle de 99,000 dollars. 47 millions de dollars short. Et on top of that, il a fait le gouvernement louer même place là pour plus passer 1 million de dollars par mois. Pour 16 ans de l'Edimi, ça c'est un crève tchè. Et pièce de monde qui aime le pays, il n'y a pas de pays où ça. 198 millions de dollars. Talk about no transparency. Mr. Speaker, the Tiohaking Agreement and the culprits are in this place. The Tiohaking Agreement. Thousand acres, dollar an acre. Some of the land was sold. It was actually transferred at three dollars and seventy cents a square foot. You know, you do that to your country, man. Three dollars and seventy cents a square foot of land close to the airport. Land close. Take it by airport, la les sept les siens. Qui savent pour quarante dollars papier carré. He pay even by Tio Hacking for two dollars. You know, you do that to your country and you love this country. Which country you love? You took $7.3 million, gave to your brother, a man doing business with your brother-in-law for vaccine. Where is our vaccine money? Where, he has paid part. Where is the rest? Uka la hanu. Ou ka pwen la jan nou, ou ka bay, nou pa nou ime de l'hôpital. Moun ka bon a te a la ou te poumye benis. Ou a yon lak li te ka pale, yon di te ka yon anywe. Nou pa ni la jan, me ou ka pwen 7 milyon dola. Because nou mna ka fe business, ek brother in law, ou ka bay 7 po 3 milyon dola. Ek jis toujou, nou po kohen tout la. You know? And up to now we don't get vaccines. And you have the audacity to talk about transparency and accountability, man. Huh? You have the audacity. You know, Mr. Speaker, I heard him talk about range. Range. You know, Mr. Speaker, let me just say this. When the CIP program was developed and the member for, me, for Viewfort South was Prime Minister, there was an immaculate piece of legislation that accompanied its introduction. First thing, Mr. Speaker, there was a limit on the amount of passports that any agent could have issued. Ask the leader of the opposition who removed that limit. Ask him, it was him. He removed the number of passports to facilitate T.O.R. King. Let's talk about escrow. Mr. Speaker, the law, as it was then, mandated the establishment of an escrow account in this country. Who permitted T.O. King to set up an escrow account overseas? Madei Saleh Setlissian. Member for Miku South. Mr. Speaker, again, the member is misleading the House. Um, Galaxy, I mean, uh, DSH, T.O. King never had any escrow account approved overseas, ever. There was no passports sold by DSH. There was no passports allocated under Alpina. There's nothing. The members in court with me making allegations that I gave to a king uh, passports. I'm looking forward to that day coming very soon I in the court, but I want to make it very clear. There was never an escrow account for DSH or Tara King. There was never any passports allocated or uh, shares allocated or ever sold to Tara King or to DSH. And I would like the member please to withdraw that statement because Never. it is absolutely a lie. Member of Castro Central, the member from Miku South, 
has indicated that the government has never approved an escrow account for DSH and wishes for you to withdraw that. No, statement. I'm not good. Mr. Speaker, clause 7 2 of the agreement speaks of the escrow account, and I can tell you I undertake to make it a document of the House very soon. Clause 7 2 says, and I believe I remember it verbatim. Try and get it for me, please. Seven two says the document that is already a documented house. Oh, it's a, ah, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. In there, the agreement signed by those two gentlemen, the member for Miku South and the member for Sozel Saltibus, it gave the developer the authority to open an account overseas in his name. And when the project is completed, the balance of the funds in that account belongs to him. Member for Miku South. Mr. Speaker, the agreement the member refers to, and I kept on saying this, is not a binding agreement. Okay? These, yeah. these, were, these were the, terms, these were the terms that were set out for negotiation, Mr. Speaker. I'm going to say it again, Mr. Speaker, very clearly. There has never been and there is no agreement that exists ever that allows DSH or Teo King to open up an escrow account. There is no agreement that was ever finalized, put together, and, and approved by both parties. Okay? This was, certainly, this was a, a, an agreement that was originally negotiated by the then opposition. But it is not a binding agreement. This is what they requested, and it's subject to approvals on both sides. It was never agreed to. That is why the member cannot provide, or the member of CIP cannot provide one contract, one contract, or one example of where a passport was sold or any money from CIP monies were used in the member, DSH member, project. Member, member Miku South, the member of Castro has never referenced passports being that. sold or monies being. That doesn't mean a passport is sold. Well, that's a different story. Let me make it very clear. There is no escrow account. There's no agreement that shows that there's an escrow account that allows. Sorry? What's it called again? Mr. Speaker, for Ms. purposes no. of elucidation, I am equipped. Member for Castle Central, please hold on. Are you finished, Member for Miku South? <laughs> Member for Miku South, are you finished? Yes. Proceed. Mr. Speaker, I have the agreement signed by the leader of the opposition and the member for Swazel, I have it on my phone. I will read clause seven. I will read clause seven because when you want to come here and lie, we have the evidence. The member, master developer. Member, don't use those words, please. Sorry, <laughs> member. I, I, yes. The, ma <laughs> the master developer shall open a new bank account in its own name with a duly licensed international banking institution outside St. Lucia and all, all design, and shall designate such bank account as the escrow account. The monies received for investment in the project of CIP participants shall be deposited into this account and used in accordance with Clause 72. And you member, it. member for Castle Central. Member for Miku South. Speaker, if the member would continue to read the agreement, if he wants to read the entire <laughs> agreement, you will we'll see that the agreement no says account. that all of these things are subject to the laws no of account. St. Lucia and final negotiation. Those are things that are put you down as terms and requests that they wanted, but they have to be approved individually, Mr. Speaker. So you can, you can read whatever you want. None of those, he cannot provide any evidence. They're in government for three and a half years, Mr. Speaker. If the member wants me to, the member said that if I was able to prove that DSH bought any land, that he would remove himself and never speak about the subject. I'm not holding him to it because I know he knew he was lying from the beginning. I am lying. But the fact remember, is, is I that just, the member. I just the member, remember, Mikusa, I just cautioned the member about using the word lie. Okay. The member, thank you. Okay. Misled the House, Mr. Speaker. Okay. The member cannot provide a contract 
that shows that the DSH and the that? government of St. Lucia opened up an escrow account. They, it does not exist. But he didn't say that, member. You keep saying that. But he he did said say permission was given. No, he never no, said no an account was open. That's the point. That's not permission. That's, That's the point permission. of negotiation. Member of Acacia permission Center, is when we have please signed proceed. an agreement. Yes, then you yes. have permission. Let, Member from Microsoft, come me, on. Let, let me read again. Let me just read it again, Mr. Mr. Speaker. The master developer shall open a new bank account in its own name with a duly licensed international banking institution outside St. Lucia and shall designate each bank account as this bank account as the escrow account. The money is received for investment in the project from CIP participants shall be depo and I'm a lawyer eh? shall be deposited into this account and used in a, in accordance with clause seven two. That is what it says shall and it goes on on the seven four. Following completion, any funds in the escrow account shall belong to the master developer and the withdrawal process is no longer applicable. Member of, member of the Council Central, member from Eco South. Mr. Speaker, the member is making reference to a framework agreement. <laughs> a framework <laughs> agreement is not the final agreement. Framework agreement is exactly what it says. It's the frame of an agreement. And each has to be approved individually per the laws of St. Lucia. The government was not in a position to approve any escrow account because that is the purview of the CIP unit. They had not even applied to the CIP unit. They would have to apply to the CM. You know, Mr. Speaker, we go through this exact same thing when we talk about a planning approval. Cabinet does not have the authority to give any developer planning approval. Cabinet, that's Cabinet not does true. not have the that's authority to give people alien language licenses. That's okay? They have to go through a process of Mr. Speaker, application. Can I Mr. proceed, Speaker. please? Okay? Can I proceed? So you're saying to me that the Cabinet has the authority to have given somebody proceed? an escrow account? Come on, guys. Mr. This is a framework Speaker, agreement. All, all and, this, I said, and, and again, if the member wants, if the member wants me to back down on this statement, provide to this house, as he has promised, the agreement between DSH or by Alpina for an escrow account, Alpina. and then I will be quiet and show where there was any money transferred. In. He's in government; he has access to everything. What are you talking about? Because so, there is none. Oh, that was in a framework agreement, no, and it was no, never, no, never, no, never no, manifested no, into a contract. Mr. Speaker. But member of Castries, hold on. The debate on this matter of permission to open an escrow account is over. Very well. On the basis of what you have said and what you have read, yes. there is nothing inconsistent between the two. Said. Very Please well. proceed. And I have the last page just to top it off, Mr. Speaker, bearing the signature of the leader of the opposition and the member for Suzel Saltibas. Very well. <laughs> So, yes, Mr. Speaker, you know, then let's move on. Let's move on, Mr. Speaker. To facilitate this deal, they bought incinerators. $11 million. How much? $11 million on incinerators that never worked. Never worked. On top of that, they built a bypass road to facilitate this again. For $15 million, Mr. Speaker. 15 million per mandu. How much we get per mandu again? 13 million. 13 million, Mr. Speaker. Ernst and Young, our people have been accustomed from time immemorial. We have never had a prime minister who sought outside assistance to prepare our budgetary estimates. Never. Until this leader of the opposition stepped in and having given Ernst and Young, he said it was 1%. I rather said, it, I rather believe it was more. You know, paid Ernst and Young millions of dollars. And after he, he realized that he was denting the coffers of this country, and whereas we have the in house ability, he stopped it. And today has the audacity, the gonad, to talk about accountability. Mr. Speaker, today I was happy to see persons, persons that were um, exercising the constitutional right of freedom of association, a right enshrined in the Constitution, and as a lawyer, I support it. But I'll tell you what, I will not quarrel only with the 17 that were dressed in flabo or the other 20 that were dressed. They don't want to be seen to be identifying the flabo. 
But, you know, Mr. Speaker, at the core of this is a government that will not stop anyone from exercising their constitutional rights. You remember what happened when the leader of the opposition was prime minister for over five years? Never could the average citizen of this country come so close to parliament. You all remember that? You all remember that? Member for Swazel, not even you they could come and touch. You, you were barricaded. Isn't that true? Isn't that true? Today, the speaker and other members of government said we are not doing that to our people. We are not doing that to our people. Give them the right to associate and so remove the barriers. And over three years, you have not seen one barrier to prevent an average solution from coming to see the persons they elected, Mr. Speaker. And then you're talking about... <laughs> Mr. Speaker, you know, we are dealing with the National Trust. And I always knew that from the time Mr. Tulsi, who was then the managing director, from the time I realized there was a back and forth between the leader of the opposition at the time, Prime Minister, and Mr. Tulsi. I knew we would have heard the consequence of such back and forth. And so, Mr. Speaker, he used the mighty sword and he stopped the subvention. And that's the first time in the history of this country again. The National Trust was... No, he didn't... Yeah, he withheld it. <laughs> you know, the National Trust was formed by Sir John George Melvin Compton, who was then Prime Minister. Notwithstanding, he now heads the party that this icon, Julian Hunt. Okay, good. I, I stand corrected. But Sir John ensured they got the subvention and it started with 200,000. It reached 700,000. Under us, he, well, he, he bolstered it. You know, you came in, Mr. Speaker. The National Trust is the repository. We depend on tourism. And all our natural assets, if we let go, we will not have anything to attract tourists down here. We will not. And so it was felt that some kind of subsidy had to be given. And he came. And because of a, an altercation, supposedly, he just swipe it and say, no longer will you get any sub subvention. You know what happened then, Mr. Speaker? I had to go to the Prime Minister because the subvention was being used to protect one of the homes of one of our Nobel laureates. You remember that, Mr. P and instantaneously, I got a call from National Trust, Mr. Minister, we can no longer pay the salary of the security. That was the ramifications of his behavior. And guess what? I asked city council to foot the bill until the government uh, um, restored the subvention. And thank God, as prime minister, leader of the government, a man who's patriotic to the country, the member for Miku East, uh, for Castries East and Prime Minister, reinstalled the subsidy to National Trust. I believe it is the wrong one. So all of that is we, and then you have one of his members calling the member for, for Castries is wicked. <laughs> Wickedness resides in the leader of the opposition, Mr. Speaker. So when you talk all the nonsense. And you know, the audacity, the goal, the goal of this man, the daughter of a man who was an icon, the founder of the party you now leads, was supposed to get a job, but for approval by the prime minister. And guess what? Guess what? He did not approve it. She don't like my party. You come and meet the people thing here. Ula go Javini, she like my party. You have party? When you have party, you get the people thing there. She don't like my party. So you didn't approve it. And then call people wicked, man. You know, I can go on and on, Mr. Speaker, but I have to leave. I have to leave. And I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, when 
you have a man who has lost his way. And all they do is they preach violence. They preach violence. Everything that comes from their mouth is for upheaval. They want to disturb the peace and tranquility of this country, Mr. Speaker. But that will not happen because our people are of resolve. Never before, in fact, for the last 32 years, we never enjoyed three consecutive years of growth over 3%. It happened right now, Mr. Speaker. And the, the ECCB is projecting over 7% for this financial year. And in our last year, 4.5%. That would mean, in the history of this country, the only time for five consecutive years in any government administration that there would have been growth in the economy of 3.4% and more consecutively for five years. The greatest growth they achieved was 3.4%, which is the worst that this government has achieved. So, Mr. Speaker, with this few words, let's all turn Munka Pali, let's turn leader of opposition, Nakadu, set this year, this set this year, that set this year, Pavle, this set this year, Li Yun Giga Pali, and Giga Pali by Koi, and Giga Pali by Dotu Amun, Kiman Konet Mania Pufe, this old. But majority set this year, majority set this year, satisfied. A gouvernement satisfait avec sa gouvernement en café et qui aura senti, il aura senti un coyo that you need a relief a pays ya et relief ça pas qu'à les pièces côté because Mahavkita le premier ministre qui a élection il aura une chance pour marcher nous et moi sav à tout 17 constituency moi qui a dit soit c'est nous cavini moi qui a dit mais qu'on sav nous cavini because to this set constituency cannot say a country a kakete a kakite a ko passage. To the decep, the sanu kapo. Mr. Speaker, with those few words, I thank you. I lose it.